Hey guys, what's going on? Josh here from Polymathics, and today we're continuing our series uh, for About Face, which is basically something I've put together for military members who are getting out and transitioning into the civilian world it's to help them, help service members find jobs that they deserve, and hopefully help you navigate um, those pitfalls that we all seem to to come across. Um, maybe you can avoid some of them. Um, and today what I want to talk about is putting all of your eggs into one basket, which is a common pitfall that we all have done at one point or another. And it's definitely something that we, that we see a lot of service members do um, when they get out. They and this can come in many different forms. Um, service members sometimes believe that um, you know they're gonna stay in for the rest of their lives for 20 years, 30 years, and then some major life event happens and they haven't planned or even considered what they might do if they have to get out earlier than anticipated. You know, I'm I'm just thinking off the cuff, you know, force reduction, um, maybe you're medically discharged, maybe, you know, there, there are several things that can happen, or, or maybe something, a family member, um, you know, is, God forbid, injured or becomes ill, and the next enlistment, you decide it's more important for you to be with them than stay in. Whatever the case may be, what your plans are now, um, whether they're to stay in or get out, like that, that could change. And um, the other, the other ways we see this too is, you know, people who know they want to get out have one job in mind. They're going to work for this company at this rate, and that's how it's going to work. And then they go in there and. <clears throat> for whatever reason, after they interview with the company, it's not a good fit. And, or maybe, um, you know, given the market, you know, maybe the company can't afford them. You know, there are several different factors that come into play, but the point is, because they only focused on that one company, now, they, now they're months behind doing research on another one or two companies that could also fit the bill. Um, some other <clears throat> areas that this happens, pardon me. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice, so it's going in and out. Another area where we see this happen a lot is military members know that they're going to be taking the TAPS class the transition transition assistance program and they they assume that that class is going to give them all that they need to succeed for their future endeavors and job ventures and the unfortunate reality is that's not the case it is a good jumping point it it breaks down a lot of the basics but um you can't expect a week not even a week's worth of information to last you a lifetime. It can jumpstart you, but it will not last you a lifetime. It has to be an ongoing process, a part of your life that you're constantly looking for new opportunities to better yourself, to network, and to find things that will progress you in your career. Um, and along with that too, when people are job transitioning, sometimes <clears throat> they'll focus on one skill set that they have. So for example, someone who was a linguist says, I'm going to get out and I'm going to be a linguist in the language that I learned um, or that I know. And um, what they don't take into account is they did far more work and they have their skill sets are much more varied than just linguist. You have most military members are going to have management skills and supervisory skills. 
that companies are looking for. Um, also, using linguists as an example, um, there's probably some you could you could kind of divert to an analyst role as well because you're doing a similar thing. Anyone who works with computers in their in the field or in their job, they too um, could set up for a system engineer background, right? Those of us um, who have um, maybe done some more physical things, given a few certifications, you could become like a fitness trainer, right? There's a lot of different areas depending on depending on what your experiences were in the military, what your career was. But don't sell yourself short and don't pigeonhole yourself into one thing. And so this is just a, it, as we look um, at military members transitioning, we see this time and time again, one area or another, they're, they're putting all their eggs in one basket instead of diversifying. And what diversifying allows you is um, a little bit of freedom and also it gives you leverage um, because you have options and the more options you have um, that's power for you to go in there boldly and say if this doesn't work I can move to that but if you're only focused on one thing and you've put it in your mind that this is the, the, the do or die then if it fails you're going to be in some serious trouble so um, so um, look at other options another thing with that is um, military members assume that you know they're going to everything's gonna work out perfectly and it's gonna be some utopian like transition where there's no hiccups or, or bumps and that if that happens it's great but more than likely there things won't go the way you plan maybe you got the job offer and the company says you'll start you know in the next few weeks and then a few weeks goes by and they say well we haven't we haven't gotten everything in place yet it's gonna be a few more weeks right what do you do then you know you have to have a plan and so um, some other areas that we see military members um, not taking advantage of their you know their opportunities is um, tuition assistance right as a, as a military member who's served you have several different options for tuition assistance that where if you're going to school either part-time or half-time you can make money to help sustain you whether you're doing a part-time job or, or whatever it might be like it'll help sustain you in those difficult times where you may not have a job the um, another thing is unemployment most military members um, and, and I believe in Maryland it's, it's like this um, if you've been let go from the military as an honorable discharge at least um, you know you get full unemployment benefits I'm not sure how long that lasts six months maybe a little longer but um, those are big opportunities and benefits that are out there for you to help keep you above water um, until you can find a safe landing, you know, a new career. And um, so many times military members aren't taking advantage of those things. Or, like I said before, they're, they're making one resume for one skill set when they can take that same resume, that template, change two or three words, and now you have three of your main skill sets that you can start sending out to companies that um, are congruent with where you want to be in the next few years. So um, anyways, I hope this information has helped. I think um, today what you can do is sit down and ask yourself, am I, is there some area where I am putting all my eggs in one basket? And, and I, I really think a lot of people it's who, who intend on transitioning it's um, that they believe that they only can go for one job 
when really they have skills and abilities that that could be in several different areas. And the other thing to consider too is, you know, maybe while you're pursuing the dream job, um, you have to get a bridge job. And a bridge job is basically a job that helps you get from one side of the road to the other. Um, so maybe you take a part-time job where you're a manager at a Starbucks, right? They're going to look for someone who has experience supervising people, who has had to work um, under pressure. And I'm not suggesting that you guys settle for Starbucks, but what I'm saying is, like, don't lose opportunities um, and sell yourself short. There's other areas that you can look at aside from just what you did in the military. Anyways, I appreciate uh, your time and sticking with me and, and thank you so much for your service and um, until I see you guys next time take it easy